Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me here this Saturday morning. If you will, like, share, comment on the post. And then um, if you'd like to follow along, we will be in the third chapter of the book of Galatians, uh, putting in verse number 6, and we'll be going through verse number 14. And uh, so I'll bypass reading that long passage, and uh, hopefully you'll take a moment and uh, look over it yourself. Um, let's look at uh, Paul's message here. Paul is uh, continuing to give his defense of uh, of the uh, of the fact that salvation, uh, that justification, salvation uh, is um, is by faith. Uh, that it doesn't come by works. There's no no uh, no uh, work that we do to be saved. And so um, he, he's uh, addressing it. We know that uh, there had been some some false teachers who had uh, come up in the churches uh, in Galatia, and they were uh, teaching that, uh, among other things, uh, circumcision, but other things as well, uh, that a man had to uh, be focused and practice uh, all the rituals and, and uh, religion and uh, keep up with all the Old Testament law, the food laws, those kinds of things, um, instead uh, of placing their focus, their faith uh, in Jesus Christ. And so they were uh, they were saying that a man had to go through a, a ritual uh, to to be saved. He had to, um, you know. And, and today we still have some of that same thing. You got to be a church member. You got to be baptized. You got to go through some class. Uh, something uh, like that. Same thing here. They were uh, giving them um, steps they had to take to have uh, a, a relationship with Christ. They were putting uh, their rituals and routines uh, ahead of uh, faith in Jesus Christ. They were, again, focusing on what is it you have to do instead of what Christ has already done. And uh, again, that is uh, still an issue uh, in, in many cases uh, among believers even today. And, uh, and so they were really, in, in one sense of the word, putting their faith in themselves of what, uh, what, what do I do uh, to become acceptable to God? Not in what Christ had done, but uh, in what, uh, what, what I can do, what have I done uh, to make myself acceptable uh, in the sight of God. And, uh, and so Paul is stressing to him here that salvation uh, is by faith, that we have to put our uh, trust and our confidence uh, in, in Christ, not in anything that we did. And Paul uses uh, my, what may seem like a, a unique uh, illustration when he uses Abraham uh, as, uh, as, as a point of reference here. Abraham was a man who uh, was um, very esteemed and respected uh, among uh, among the Jews, among the Israelites. They really uh, looked forward to him uh, or looked up to him. And uh, so he says God appeared uh, to Abraham and uh, challenged him. He had him to leave his home, uh, leave his friends, leave his, uh, again, uh, leave all those things. And God made him two promises if he would, uh, if he would do that, that he would become uh, the father of a new nation and that all of the nations, all the world, would be blessed by his descendants. And two things happened. In verse 6, it tells us Abraham believed God. And it was counted to him as righteousness uh, because he believed God. His, his faith here was in, in God, not in his words. Abraham wasn't believing that he could be the father of a great nation or believing uh, that he could do something, but he put his confidence, uh, his faith in God. So he got up and he left it all. He left home uh, and, uh, and went out. Uh, to, to follow the leadership of God. And so he says in verse 7, any of those that uh, put their faith in God, he says they're the true children of God. They're the sons of Abraham. They are the followers of God, those that believe 
God. Not believe in ritual, not believe in routine, but those who put their faith in God and Him alone, in Christ. Uh, verse 9, he says, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Abraham worked in faith, now we work in faith. Then he goes on, he says, if you allow the works of the law, if you're trying somehow to uh, to earn salvation, if you're trying somehow to do works, um, he said, you're, you're already cursed. He said, because uh, it says, cursed is everyone doesn't abide by all the things written in the law. Um, it only takes one lie to be a sinner, one, one lie, um, one covetous thought, one uh, adulterous thought, any of those things. And he says, if you do that, then you're cursed, you're guilty, that we're not justified by the law. We're not justified by the things we do, but the righteous shall live by faith, he says. That is uh, where our salvation, where our relationship comes from, and you know, what a, what a relief that is uh, to know that um, my, my salvation, my eternity, my relationship with God isn't based on uh, my good works um, or uh, anything that I might attempt to do, but my, my, my walk with the Lord, my future, my eternity is based on faith, on putting my confidence and my trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ, and then, as he says here in verse 11, living by that faith. Don't put your confidence in works. Don't put your confidence and hope in what you're doing. You can't give enough money. You can't go to church enough. You can't memorize enough scripture to be acceptable to God. We become acceptable. We become part of the family of God by placing our faith in the finished work the forgiveness, the mercy provided by Jesus Christ at Calvary. What a what a freeing fault and truth that is. You think about it. Have a good weekend. We'll see you here next time.